This episode is brought to you by What's the Big Idea? An indispensable guide to becoming a kick-ass creative director. By yours truly, Jaime Cabrera. Pick it up on Amazon and now available on Audible. If you've always wanted to know what it takes to be a commercial director, you need to check out commercialdirectingfilmschool.com. I'm signed up for the Filmmaker Bundle, which includes the Masterclass, the Online Shadow, and the Case Study Masterclass. It's got 100% five-star reviews, and it also includes a 30-minute call with the master himself, my friend, Jordan Brady, who's directed more than 1,300 commercials for top brands. And right now, exclusively for my listeners, use the code BIGIDEA, one word, to get a whopping $100 off either the Masterclass or the Shadow Course. Again, the code Big Idea, one word for one hundred dollars off. Go to commercialdirectingfilmschool.com and get started today. Make the logo big. Make the logo big. Make the logo big. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to the podcast confessions of a creative director the original podcast made by a creative director for creative directors for aspiring creative directors for creatives of all types looking to up their game by learning from the world's best this is your podcast and i am your host jaime cabrera on today's show we have copywriter and creative director extraordinaire kevin lynch His remarkable career has taken him around the globe, including stints in China and Sweden, where he most recently served as a creative director at Oatly. Kevin has always guided his career choices by asking this question, what stories will I be able to tell? Today, he's here to share his five principles for finding success in a non-linear career. So without further ado, let's get into it with Kevin Lynch. Kevin Lynch. Good morning, or good, good afternoon, I guess, from, uh, from Sweden, right? Indeed, how are you? I'm doing well. It's great to see you. You're living in the, in the and I, I think if I read that, this correctly recently, the happiest, most fulfilled country in the world. Their residents are the most fulfilled and they're the happiest. Is that true? Can you confirm that for the audience? <laughs> you know, I thought it was Finland that won this year. Oh, maybe but, it uh, is. Yeah, fin- Finland, Sweden, and Denmark all kind of trade the title uh, back and forth. And yeah, it's a, pretty, uh, it's a pretty outstanding part of the world, for sure. That's awesome. Well, you look, you look very happy, and you look very well-rested, so <laughs> it mu- there must be something to it. Uh, but yeah, Indeed. I mean, how, how, ex- how exciting to live there, and, and that kind of factors into the conversation that we're going to have, have later, because you are a man of the world. You've, you've uh, worked at a lot of uh, different places and exciting locales. Uh, all over the globe, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But if you wouldn't mind just giving us uh, a little tour, uh, so to speak, of of your career, where it's taking you, uh, a couple of the key highlights, and just level set for the audience, what you've done and uh, where you've been. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah. Yeah. The the, uh, the career path. Uh, I, I came out of Michigan State University. Uh, go green. Yeah, and if, if we can put a pause here, if anyone wants to yell, go white. That would be that would be great. <laughs> um, but the the uh, yeah, the, so the first job was in Detroit. It was working on Jeep, which was a, a fantastic account considering I, I didn't have a particularly good portfolio at the time. Um, and from there, I hopped over to DDB in Chicago. I uh, was there for a couple of years before jumping to uh, a an office of Campbell Methune um, uh, that handled the Corona account at the time, along with wow. a couple other interesting ones. Yeah, it was a bunch of fun. And, and from there, did enough nice work that uh, it got the attention of McConaughey Stein Schmidt Brown, which was kind of doing the best work in Chicago uh, at the time. And so had a, a couple of wonderful years uh, with some incredibly talented folks there. And uh, considering that was kind of the best place in Chicago, I thought, well, we'll, you know, head off to the best place in North America at the time, which was a place called Roche Macaulay uh, up in Toronto. Yeah. And it just, yeah, it had just won the Ad Age International Agency of the Year back back when they had one international agency of the year, not, you know, the dozens and categories <laughs> that, they, that they tend to do now. But uh, yeah. it was really, it was just a fantastic place. Um, and from there, bounced back to uh, to a place called Arian Low and Travis, 
which kind of wanted to do what Roche was doing uh, from a structure standpoint and then sort of a cell standpoint. So there were kind of some cool, cool structural things that they did. Uh, and they, th after that, we actually, uh, a couple partners and I started our own place called Hadrian's Wall uh, in Chicago and ran that independently for about six years and then sold it to NDC which is one of the networks they had Crispin Porter and Kirschenbaum and Bond and a oh. couple of their ter terrific places, Bruce Mao. Uh, and uh, so uh, worked, worked under the banner of Zig, which was sort of a, a uh, it was an agency in Toronto and we became the U S operation of, of Zig for a couple of years. And after that kind of, kind of said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, you know, the intention when we went to Toronto was to kind of bounce around the planet for a bit. And then we boomeranged back to Chicago to reunite with a, a terrific uh, a former partner of mine. And so we kind of had it in the back of our minds that we should we should bounce around the planet a little bit more. So the intention was to go to somewhere internationally after Hadrian's Wall. And uh, yeah. and BBDO called and said, hey, we know you're looking, at, you know, elsewhere, but we have a really terrific role for you here in Chicago. And. Uh, yeah, so it, it made a bunch of sense. So I, I actually joined on the proximity side. Um, they, were, they had their digital uh, their digital offering at the time that was just uh, starting out with a half dozen folks. And so we, we built that up. And eventually I had a role on both the proximity and BBDO sides. And then uh, that led to me putting my hand up uh, after about three years and saying, hey, I, I am going to head out somewhere. And I'm saying we'd love to keep you in the network. So that led to Shanghai. So I was in Shanghai for about a year uh, before they said, hey, can you take on Hong Kong and Guangzhou, um, which is sort of BBDO South China at the time. Wow. So, yeah, so uh, headed down there and did that for three years, um, kind of commuting back and forth between there and Shanghai where my wife and daughter were. And then, uh, uh, jo and then I jumped to the client side. I joined uh, Shanghai American School which was uh, Chicago or Chicago's, which was Shanghai, uh, China's oldest and largest international school. Um, they'd been around since 1912, but they never had a director of marketing. Um, they didn't really necessarily, it was a fantastic school that just didn't know how to kind of tell its story. So it was yeah. a really kind of a great opportunity to work for a brand that you're passionate about or a product that you're passionate about that, you know, hasn't, hasn't, you know, sort of established those branding fundamentals. So that was a really, really cool role. And then from there, started a conversation with Oatly uh, initially about a role in, in Shanghai um, that eventually turned into a role in uh, here in Sweden. And so uh, came over here about two and a half years ago. And uh, yeah, I was with Oatly for about uh, two and a half years before they, I, I say fire, fired me, uh, John Spook. <laughs> John Schoolcraft, who heads up uh, the creative at Oatly, says technically they laid me off. I, I think we should just agree that they canned my ass. Um, so <laughs> if we can, if we can just you know sort of stick with that wording, just, that would be great. Just call just call it what it is. <laughs> uh, and I love and I love that I love that you have a sense of humor about it. And uh, you know it's probably because you you understand probably the you know every all the 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 things that go into running an agency, and and it's good that that you have. Uh, a sense of humor in it, and and it probably is due to the fact that you know, you know, you're confident in your work. You know, you know, you're going to be fine. You know, you're probably opening it up to a whole bunch. He as he as he makes a face, and <laughs> but you're probably going to open up to all kinds of uh, other opportunities. I'm sure. So, yeah, you know, it's it's funny that like it's been over 20 years since I left a job for another job. So I usually yeah. quit before I know what's going to happen next. And I think <clears throat> I do think part of the advantage of that is. As you said, like you have conversations with people you, you know, you wouldn't have been on their radar if you hadn't been able to raise your hand really high and say, hey, I'm looking for whatever's next. So, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a super exciting time. I really, uh, you know, timing wasn't wasn't my of my choosing, but I, right. I love I love the phase. Yeah. And if anybody's interested, <clears throat> you wrote a great post about it. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to link link to that. Um, cool. But what I love what I love about you, and we had this we had this conversation uh, during our kind of our pre call, and you said something that that stuck with me, and and it's really resonating with me. And you said that you've always sort of been led to roles based on this question, which is what stories will I be able to tell if I take this role on? Right? It wasn't. It hasn't always been about titles or or 
you know, or, uh, you know, uh, agency names, or it, it's been more about like, what, what, what stories will I be able to tell? And I think that's really, you know, when you boil it down, that's what you're talking about, right? Is this, is this idea of, of this nonlinear path. And you've kind of thought about this and, and want to share some, some sort of principles that have guided your, your career a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, I think just, you know, being guided by the stories that you can tell, you know, at, at the heart of that, you know, you're going to end up in roles that if you follow that, I mean, it worked for me. If, it, if, it, if you try it, it, what you'll find is you'll take on roles that it's like, well, I've never done that before, you know, and that's, right. and that, I think that's really the joy of, of what we do. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, because that, that newness can come in, you know, it could come in roles, it could come in, you know, geography, it could come in, uh, you know, types of industries and, and sort of whatnot. And I think it just sort of like, you know, it opens your aperture a bit to experiences that you might not, you know, have or even kind of see on the radar. If you're looking at the title thing, the money thing, the award thing, the, you know, like the typical sort of measures of success in our industry. Um, If you kind of back off and go, hey, how can I contribute to a place in a new way? Um, Yeah, you just end up with a little bit more of an interesting career path, a little bit more unexpected. Yeah. And and uh, I think it's I think it's uh, you know something that the audience, the listeners, especially the younger folks, should really consider, right? Because there is that pressure, I think, uh, when you're coming up, right? It's like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next title? What's the next? And then sometimes you might have an opportunity to go somewhere else, and it's like a title below, or it's you know maybe the maybe it's uh, I don't know whatever it might be, and you don't take it, and that could have been. Uh, you know, the launching point for something even more incredible. Obviously, you never know, but uh, there is something to be said about maybe it's okay to detour once in a while because I think you can always get back. I mean, did, were you ever in a position where you felt like, well, shit, I'm never going to be able to get back here? But but back to what? You know, like back yeah. to what other, you know, back well, yeah, to what other right. people expect yeah. you to be. Like, eh, you yeah, know, I, I don't, that wasn't really the goal. You know, the goal was yeah. to, I, I have this, uh, I have this, um, Test. Sweden has ruined it a little bit. So, so until I got here, like I, I don't use an alarm clock. I, I just, I haven't in my whole career. And I always know it's time to leave when I start sleeping in, you know, like, cause usually I'm like by five, six in the morning, I'm kind of up and I'm geeked and, you know, about what I'm going to do that day. And, and when I stop being geeked, like, it's just, if that's the internal meter that says, mm, I think you're, uh, I think you've run out of, out of, uh, excitement contribution to this role. So Sweden has screwed it up just because of the light. Like it's, it's <laughs> because there's some, some parts of the year it's dark till nine, nine thirty in the morning. Other times it's like 3 a.m. and the birds are singing. So, so there help. you go. Yeah. So maybe, it, maybe it wasn't a canning. Maybe it was just, you just didn't know, right? Because of the light <laughs> thing. I like that story. I like that story. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. That's, but, uh, you know what? I just marked that. There's a little tool here where I can mark that because uh, I'll go back and, and, and turn that into a little, a little nugget. That yeah. perhaps is, is you know, the, the, the single best test. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm running it through my own mind and I won't share the results, but uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I mean, when it's kind of like, Alexa, you know, get, set a timer for 10 more minutes. You know, when you're talking to Alexa... <laughs> Instead of jumping out of bed, maybe maybe it's maybe it's time that you do something. Yeah, wow, for that's sure, great. For I sure. love that. Yeah, I mean, and and I don't I don't mean to be totally oblivious to to you know sort of the the implications of you taking an unexpected role. You know that you're going to have to. You know, I I think the like I took the role at Shanghai American School that's pretty unexpected and way off track of someone who is just coming from a you know big title big role at a big you know big agency network network like bbdo but yeah like i think you do like to me there was enough confidence not so much to get back into something or you know sort of high profile as it was i'll bet i'll find something really interesting next time too you know and 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 i knew that at at the school what i was doing was fulfilling for me it was rewarding for the institution which i really dig um, and I would have some good stories to tell. And so, so yeah. that was sort of, that's where the confidence came from of like, I don't know what's next, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So, Yeah. And, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about this even a little bit more, but this idea of, of going to a place where you can make an impact, right? And it's like, 
I'm coming into this thing. They've never had a marketing director. I can I can really make an impact and and leave them a, a positive mark. So I mean that's got to be very appealing as well. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's it, it, the the unique opportunity there is that in, international schools tend to have really short institutional memories because you have so much turnover of leadership and and teachers and obviously students sort of coming and going. So. You know, to to be able to kind of go, hey, we've got this great story to tell that that if you're at the school, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. I think that there's a real reward and an affinity that's created there. And and I think a joy of people, you know, kind of being being part of that community, Um, you know, but yeah, it was it was to the point where when people would ask me how long I was going to stay at the school, my answer was was always, you know, I'll stay as long as I'm as long as I'm making a difference. And uh, yeah. Yeah, ultimately, that was yeah, about four, four and a half years. That's great. All right, audience, and you know, you need to take out your your uh, pad and pencil here. We're going to go through these five principles, um, <laughs> and I'll and I'll and I'll tee you up uh, just here so that that we can kind of go go through them because uh, sometimes I tend to get too excited and take us off track. Number one, you're far more in charge of your career than you think. What What do you mean? Yeah, so I I, I think that that you know, there's a huge advantage, particularly in the creative community, to, to you know, have the power to create, you know, sort of reasons for, for people hiring you. Like, if you're a plumber, it's like, you fix a pipe, and, and that's that. Like, you can't prove that you pick, fix a pipe extra well, or, or an accountant, you know, you can't do sort of pretend spreadsheets. Uh, they kind of frown at that uh, in the accounting industry, from what I'm from what I'm told. From what but, I'm told. But, you know, like, <laughs> but 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 the you know like I always I look at and I'm going through it now you know looking through looking at at a job search and I'm always amazed at creatives who go you know hey I'm I'm available now it's like don't tell me don't tell me you're available show me that you're interesting you know like create a story yourself and like a good example is for Oatly where you know we started this conversation when I was in Shanghai and it was about a China position. Ultimately, they needed a Chinese speaker for the role, and so you know that kind of kind of wiped me out. But we said, yeah, we promised to keep in touch, and I mean, everyone's been in those positions. Yeah, we'll keep it. It's not no, it's just a not yeah. now. It's like yeah, right. cool. Like, and that's you know that's what the CEO told me, and I was like, I am so keeping you to that because it really felt like it was the right place. And so for the next year and a half, like it was, and it was literally a year and a half. Every time I talked to them. I wouldn't say, hey, I'm thinking of you or, hey, has anything changed over there? It was, hey, check this out, this thing out that I, I just did. It's really hilarious or just something to make them laugh. And like it was rarely about the job. And it was rarely about oat milk. It was, you know, it wasn't about anything. It was just sort of giving them an additional reason to go, God, this, this person's really wonderful and, and very much like minded with, with what we do. And, you know, we really do need to find a spot for them. And uh, like ultimately it, it <laughs> So I, I ended up getting into Oatly because I threatened them, um, uh, which which I'm not recommending. Wait but, a minute, but, do you, but you said that was point number two is threaten. And, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> How, what do you mean? What do you mean you threatened them? Oh, man, so so it had been a year and a half, and uh, and I had just I decided that I wasn't making an impact much longer at the school. So I signed a you know an additional six month extension, and then just said, hey, I really I really have to go. Uh, and this was at the end of uh, 2020. And so I I uh, called John uh, Schoolcraft over at Oatly in like September. And I just said, listen, you know, I, my job finishes in, in Shanghai in December. In January, I'm moving to Sweden and I'm going to start doing work for you. I'm hoping that we can work out contract details before the Christmas party. Otherwise, it's going to be really fucking awkward. And And like, I swear to God, <laughs> that was the plan. Like that was absolutely, you can ask my wife, any of my friends, like that was going to happen. Uh, and, and, and he laughed nervously um, and said, you know, give me a week. And then they, you know, sure enough, they came back. They're like, okay, you can, you can do your little plan, but you're actually invited. Not, not, uh, you know, we don't have to do a, uh, what, what do you call the, uh, when you get a warrant out to keep someone away? Like a restraining Jesus. order. Restraining order. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is that was basically probably going to, uh, but, I mean, but, but, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I'll, I'll you're, I, I love you because you have this, this great sense of humor. How much of that was 
humor and how much of it was like just will like i'm willing this i i am manifesting this and gonna make it happen like what w- was there any humor in it none at all no like that no. was like you know what honestly like it felt that right i i had never um a, a uh an, an old friend of mine who i hadn't talked to in years uh who was new york based she called and she's the one who put put me on their radar and vice versa and she said, you know, she she said, you know, they're looking for a creative director in Shanghai. She said, yeah. you're the only person in Shanghai who I know, which yeah. I'm like, thank you for being so selective. But yeah. but she um, uh, she said what I said, I, I can't do it. I just signed a, uh, an extension on my, on my uh, current job, but, you know, happy to take a look. What's the name? She said, Oatly. I'm like, how do you spell that? Because I'd never heard of that. And uh, and I said, happy to give you some names. And I looked at looked at the, uh, you know, their website and just, you know, uh, looked at all the work that they were doing. And I called it the next day. I'm like, fuck you. I'm not giving you anyone's name but mine. And like it really it genuinely just felt really good. I when I talked to my dad about it, you know, a couple of weeks later, I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to this country company. I don't know if anything will happen. And he looked it up. He's like, so you're working for them? I'm like, no, he goes, yeah, because it sounds like you wrote this. I really like it just it it was such a such a nice, um, just a nice uh, match of sensibilities. So, so yeah, that absolutely was going to happen. And, and if and the the plan was actually I was going to go because we had talked about a number of southern uh, European you know, markets that, that, you know, they kind of needed uh, particular help on. And so I was going to couch surf my way through Southern Europe and like be blogging at the whole way and, and, you know, make that public like on LinkedIn or, or whatever, but just like basically to the point where if I arrived in Sweden that they didn't hire me, there'd be a bunch of other people who were like, oh, I'll hire you because you're pathetic or, or funny or ideally um, maybe <laughs> both. But, but yeah, so that was honestly, that was the plan. It was, it was not like that is exactly what was going to happen. So I I'm, love that. I'm, su- I'm super grateful that they made it easy, um, but they kind of yeah. ruined a good, good, a good plan. So I'm bummed at- I'm yeah, probably not. Probably not uh, something you can do just right off the bat, right? Because you already had started. You had a relationship with them a little bit, but what a great, what a great, great story. That's going to be like uh, one point two uh, principle number <laughs> one point two, an addendum yeah, to threatened. you're far more in charge of your career than you think. All right, yeah. love that. Um, <laughs> and just a just a quick note, um, tying back to what's something that you said, yeah. which I I feel strongly about too. Which is that idea of just make stuff, makes makes make stuff, and I and I love what you're saying that, you know, it's like instead of saying available, said, uh, here's what I made. I made something, right? I made this. I made that. Totally. It doesn't even have to be for anybody. It can be. I have a, a friend who's who's teaching himself how to do um, uh, animation. He's a former actor, and he's doing uh, he's doing animation, and he posts his progress and little videos, and they're charming and they're wonderful, and I'm sure that he's awesome. gotten some new work from him, right? Because it's like, that's what you want to see. I mean, totally. you want to see people doing stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the advice that I give um, students who are trying to break into advertising now is that, you know, back when, when I broke into the business, you know, you, you, I mean, there were very, there were relatively few channels and you couldn't actually make anything. You couldn't make a TV spot or a radio commercial right. or what have you. I mean, you could, but it was, it was definitely a lot more involved. And now it's just like, I, it just feels like if you can't, like, it, it just feels like you have the opportunity to prove yourself to the, instead of saying, Hey, here's what I would do if you hired me. It's like, Hey, here's what I've done. You know, like, so whether it's, you know, um, you know, whether it's some sort of movement or something that you believe in, whether it's, you know, um, doing a fan clubby thing for a brand that you love, like, like right. whatever it might be, it just feels like you have a, a great opportunity to make something and, and kind of prove, prove what you would do rather than just talk about it theoretically. Right. Right. Yeah, and it keeps you, totally. and it keeps you sharp. Um, totally. All right. Principle number two, pick evergreen goals, ones that will fuel a career and maybe a life. <laughs> wow. That sounds more impressive than maybe my description is going to be. But so, so the, the, uh, when I mean ever by evergreen goals is, is kind of playing the long game. Like don't, don't have these goals that, you're going to finish. Like if you want to be a CD by 25 or 30 or whatever, it's like, cool. What do you do when you're 26 or 31? Or if you want to work at Wyden, that's cool. But what, what happens after Wyden? And it's just like, it, it feels like there's, you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for the slump or, or this absolute, or just an out and out failure. And I don't, I don't know if, 
like I, I was I always feel like career wise, like you shouldn't look ahead too much. You'll spoil the surprise. You know, like part of the fun of this is going, you know, kind of going from adventure to adventure. I, I kind of feel like from a career standpoint, you know, those cartoon like those cartoons where someone's sleepwalking through a construction site and they're just about to walk off a cliff and then, you know, the girder yeah. comes just in time and then they're yeah. about to go down the elevator shaft and the elevator arrives just at, like it. That's kind of feels like like how I've approached my career is just, you know, you just keep going forward and, you know, good shit kind of appears right, right when it ne- needs to. And I think just having that faith having having these goals that aren't so defined is really helpful so so i'll be specific for me the 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 sort of career long goal was i need to be happier with my work that i did this year happier than i was last year like my work needs to just constantly improve and and i, I always take sort of a, a a year-end measure um you look at the best work that you've done and and you know it, there's definitely been a years where it's like ah. I don't see the improvement in the work and you can look at other things that you've contributed to, to an organization of, but yeah, the, you know, it's not showing up in the work. Um, but I think having that sort of, you know, constant improvement um, type goal, I think has been really helpful. And it's also been a big kick in the ass because if your goal is to do better work every year and you're in a position where, you know, maybe you're contributing a bunch, you know, to maybe there's, there's interesting things about the job, but it's not necessarily work. Well, then you know, go make up some more, some work. You know, like v- volunteer for for a uh, you know some uh, some sort of uh, nonprofit, or you know, create your own kind of you know shit stirring movement movementy kind of a thing. Like do you know? But if the pressure is on you, and again, you have you have that control because you are a creator. Um, it, it really, it, I think it does a much nicer job than setting these milestones that you achieve or don't achieve. And once you achieve them, it feels like, you know, all right, well, that was, that was kind of the peak. So does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. And, and it, it just, it, yeah. F- focusing less on, I, I think we, we, I think we sometimes tend to focus on, um, you know the 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 detail stuff and forget to zoom out and look at the at the big picture right which is we're thinking about like i want to work at this place and i want to win this award and all that and when you look at it, it it from a from a when you zoom out it's more about like i i want to do better work each year like you just said right the same sort of the same thing but it's a different it's a different way to look at it and it probably opens you up to more possibility when you're thinking about it that way it does. It does. And I, I think to, to some degree, you know, what we talked about earlier of looking at jobs and going, what stories will I be able to tell? That was actually an outgrowth of kind of a personal, a personal, uh, I don't know if it was a goal, but, but I had this sort of philosophy of like, never go to bed until you have a story to tell, you know, that like if every single day you're going to experience something, do something that, you know, it might not be the most interesting story, but, you know, just this sort of constant daily challenge of of doing something interesting enough that if someone says, how was your day yesterday? You've got a story to tell. I think if you, you know, I think if you take that on as kind of a, a life philosophy, I think it turns into a really nice work philosophy as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great idea. And probably something you should, you should write that book. I, I love that. And maybe you start keeping it, keeping a journal of all the, that's a great way to journal when you think about it. It's like, I'm just going to write is. down one thing, one little story that happened. That was, that was my favorite for today. I totally, love that. Totally. Uh, uh, this next one is, is related in, in a sense, but it's really creating a broad definition of your career. And, and I was listening to a podcast and it, and, and the, two sort of things converged after I spoke to you and it was a coach. It was a kind of a coach talking to Carl Fussman. I don't know if you've heard him. He's really an interesting character. I guess he used to be like a former writer at Esquire or something. And he started a podcast, older, older guy. And he was talking to this coach and, and similar to what we just been talking about. Sometimes when you look at things too closely, you lose sight of the big picture, right? And he did this exercise where after a series of questions, you get to the core of what you really love to do. And he did this with with this uh, Carl Fussman guy. And what they boil down the essence of what he loves to do is he likes to ask good questions. That's it. 
And when you think about it that way, you could take your career in any number of ways, right? I'm just being totally. silly here, but it's like you're going to be a, you know, an FBI interrogator. I don't know. But when you look at it at its core, because he first started off with, while I, you know, I interview people, I interview celebrities and try to get them to say interesting things, right? And then they kept drilling down. And then what they got down to was, I like to ask good questions or something like that. And yeah. it, it reminded me, it kind of rhymed with what you're talking about here is creating this broader definition of your career. Totally. And, and, and honestly, you, you just made the point better than, better than I could have. I, I think just early on in my career, I'd say I'm in advertising or I'm a copywriter. And now, you know, I'm much more likely to say I'm a problem sol solver or I talk people into things, you know, and, and that might sound a little bit too vague. But again, if, if you are committed to that definition, then, it, yeah, as you said, it just it opens you up to take on roles that you're like, yeah, I didn't see this thing coming either. But I'm, I'm going to talk a bunch of people into stuff, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I think there's I, I think. I think there's, again, a real benefit. All, all these are a little bit of a, like, mind tricks, right? You know, it's just it's tr just trying to, like, open up in, in your own mind, you know, dismiss the measures, typical measures of success. And, and it, you know, it allows you to kind of be comfortable pursuing whatever path you, you take. Um, and and I, so I, I think that's, to me, that's the big benefit of, of the, you know, picking these evergreen goals or, or you know, creating the, these sort of broader more more arguably more vague definitions is it's just uh yeah it's just clearing the cleansing the palate i suppose and so let me ask you a question you go to a party and somebody says hey kevin what do you do do you literally answer that way because sometimes i will say that i'm like i make shit happen you know and they're like ah yeah. what does that mean i'm like well i do you know and i'll tell them a little bit about what i do for my day job and then i say oh i got this podcast and i do you know i mean do you literally do that yeah yeah, I, I, I do. I do. I, I've, I've definitely told people, I, I, I've definitely, if I'm in a crowd where I underplay stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a copywriter. And they, you know, say, oh, that, you know, usually, yeah, I'll say I'm a copywriter. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the better thing is like, yeah, talk, talk people into things. Oh, like, where, where does that happen? Because that could be a legal profession. It could be an architect, could be advertising, could be anything. So that's, uh, yeah. That's yeah, cool. But I'm, I but love I'm, that. Yeah. 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 Sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, I was going to say I typically try not to talk to people at parties. So so that's uh, <laughs> that's why that stumbled a bit on him like, oh, God, yeah, when I can't avoid that. Yeah. You, you, cool. so, so, you know, people, people, you know, they, they, they say that or they now say that. It's a it's a spectrum, right? Like uh, introversion and extroversion is, is a spectrum. So at once you 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 strike me as very sort of outgoing, and then you also kind of seem a little bit more introverted. So where where would you say you kind of line up on that spectrum? I'm just curious. Yeah, professionally outgoing, personally uh, introverted, probably really is, is the balance. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I uh, yeah I I there's definitely a mix, as you said. I, I'm glad that. Spectrum is being recognized because it kind of takes the pressure off people to neatly fit into one category or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, socially, I, I'll, I'm a bit of a wallflower at parties. That said, I'm like right now I'm organizing. I call it the season of light. So it's so you know Sweden has some pretty dark months between November and February, um, and so I am organizing a thing for whoever wants to join. Like every single week we're going to do something interesting and cool to kind of get us through these, uh, these dark periods. So, um, that's yeah, cool. so that's like, a, yeah, that's a very extroverted thing. Um, but you know, uh, I probably won't talk to people while we're, while we're doing it. I'm just kidding. But it's, <laughs> but it's also a very creative, it's also a very creative thing, right? So kind of going back to a previous point is like, you're making, even if you, you know, you're making events, you're making, sure. you know, that's pretty neat. Yeah, totally, totally. What are yeah, some of the, just now we're going to go off on a little tangent, but what are some of the activities or things that you might do? Yeah, so so we're, um, like, one is we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to go to the Modern Museum here in Malmo and check out stuff. But the checking out stuff has nothing to do with work. You have to go and you have to observe things, observe, like, how, how your ticket was taken, observe a corner that didn't get dusted, observe like whatever. And then we all get together and talk about what we've seen that has nothing to do with the art. It just has to do with the, the surroundings of, of the art and, you know, how the lighting was or how, you know, people were, you know, 
moving moving from display to display or what, whatever it might be. So, you know, something like that where it's it's just it's a little bit of an, an interesting look at a, a museum or. Um, one, uh, we have a, uh, you know, new restaurant night where we're just going to go out to dinner, but it's going to be at a place where no one, you know, it, Momo is a small town, so this is going to kind of, kind of be difficult, but we're going to find some restaurant where no one has been to and that, you know, and that's where you'll go. So just like, again, big, you know, kind of bigger experiences, smaller experiences, whatever, whatever they might be. But I think, yeah. any, you know, again, I think everyone will have a story to tell by the time they go to bed. That's great. And and the museum idea, especially, is that something that you just that just popped in your head, or where did you come up with that? Yeah, no, that um, uh, that one. God, I want to say someone said it. I, I I'm I'm not taking credit for that one at all. There's there's actually um, here's another example though. Um, uh, here in Malmo, there's we our skyline is literally one building. Uh, it's the tallest building in Scandinavia right now. Um, and it's this beautiful, it's the first twisted tower uh, in the world. It's a Santiago wow. Calatrava building. Really, really beautiful. And, and so it's the thing that everyone takes pictures of. So one of the, one of the events is going to be find a, find a view of the turning torso that, has, that hasn't been seen or that, that is interesting. And so then, you know, everyone will upload pictures and we'll go and, you know, just sort of see this thing that we're all super familiar with and, and just, you know, different ways to, to kind of view it. So yeah, it's just you That's know, appreciating neat. the town around you. Yeah, stuff like that. So That's neat. That I need I need yeah. to do more more stuff like that. I've done some some similar part not similar but you know parties where it's like, "Hey, bring, you know, I'm I'm just started getting into uh collecting vinyl, but it's like, "Okay, bring, you know, two records that changed your life or something like that." Nice, listen nice. to them and but, I, but that's that's great. I need that's a great reminder to to kind of keep because that factors into your work too, right? It's just about For staying sure. staying open and creative and looking at at, at at things from different angles. So I love that. Yeah, okay. but you know, we we did we did uh, one one other example when we were in Shanghai. We started this thing called Table for Eight, where we would invite um, we would invite eight people to brunch, but we wouldn't tell anyone who else was there, and we would make sure that people didn't necessarily have that much of a connection. And, uh, and just that mystery of like, I'm going to, I'm going to brunch and I don't know who with like eight people, you should, you should, you know, that's a tight enough thing that your expectations are. Right. I will know someone. So just adding that little sense of mystery, I think, you know, one of the things about technology that I think we underappreciate is just how predictable our lives are now that, that you're able to check out menus before you go to a restaurant, you're able to find your friends instantly at a concert, like whatever, whatever that might be, there's a predictability. And I think when you kind of take that away, it, it makes for a really pretty special, uh, uh, pretty special and memorable time. That's cool. I like that. All right. Number four, stay mindful of what energizes you. Yeah. It, it, so here I think the, um, again, it's really kind of looking at your career and, and trying to define it, not by, you know, these external sort of factors, but by you know, like, what are these moments of your career that you remember? Like I, I, I always think back to a time in Chicago where I was working at DDB on, I, it was on Bud Light, I think. And, you know, someone, uh, one of the account guys came up and said, oh man, your, your radio uh, campaign is just killing it. I just talked to the San Diego, you know, uh, you know, San Diego uh, distributor right. and they're really, I'm like, well, what's killing it? Like, what does that, what does that mean? You know, it, it sounds great. I'm happy, but what does that mean? He's like, I, I don't know. They're really happy. And I think sales are up. And like, and it was just like this super weird, vague kind of a thing that afternoon. Cause it was at a time where I was doing some freelance things just to, again, make sure I was, I was, you know, continuing to, to develop as a writer. So that afternoon I had a meeting with the music house and, and uh, it was, a, you know, it was just a one, one man operation. Um, and we sat down and reviewed the six ads that he had, that we had uh, written that he was currently running. And he said, you know, this ad got me 13 calls. This ad got me eight calls. And, you know, and we talked about why, you know, I mean, it was an over analysis, you know, over analyzing probably um, something uh, pretty simple, but I loved the, I loved the responsibility of, you know, what effect the work was actually having. I love the fact that here's this dude who is counting on putting, you know, food on the table for he and his family based on how the, how these ads work. And I, and I, 
it was it was so interesting that both of those events happened in the same day, and it really allowed you to kind of go, yeah, I I, I love doing stuff that everyone recognizes, you know, and, and it has a nice big media plan behind it. But just knowing that your work makes a difference, I think, is uh, can come in a lot of different ways. And so, yeah, that personal responsibility thing, I think, continues to, you know, continues to kind of drive, drive and, and energize me. So. Yeah. So, again, this idea of making impact. Right. And and. <clears throat> I think you and I share this in common. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, that's kind of what we get paid to do, right? And 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 to make an impact. And and we're we're fortunate enough to to uh, do that by coming up with ideas and concepts and things that are creative and things like that, right? But when did this whole thing? And I know you have strong opinions about this. Come into the picture that it's a, it's about awards, right? I mean, you hear more about awards than about impact right like i can't even think of the last time that i that i saw something on linkedin where it's like we love this ad we love it it was awesome it was super creative and it led to this right it's like yeah. all it ever is and it led to me going and drinking rosé on a super yacht <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, when did that for... when when did that happen yeah it's it's interesting i i, I the uh I mean, I to be honest, like I've had a disinterest in awards for a couple of decades now, um, but it, it feels like now it's more valid. Um, there, that, that having that opinion is a bit more valid. I think I think a huge part of it is just in what is being recognized. You know, when when you know you have Forbes magazine saying there's 900 award advertising award shows a year, like or or it can. There's 628 categories, literally, like that. I'm not exaggerating. 628 categories, uh, you know, and and so so that really devalues things that actually win. Then you kind of look at how short lists are now like a thing. Like it's it it to me the analogy is like a sports team printing commemorative T-shirts for a halftime lead. Like uh, short list doesn't mean like you didn't win anything. Like you spelled everything right. And the check cleared at your entry, like, like, come on, let's not do that. And so, so I think, I think just the bar continues to go lower and lower. And, you know, I, I understand everyone needs, you know, a, a little incentive and what have you, but it's, I, when awards become an inaccurate measure of quality, you know, what I think that awards used to highlight the most talented profession professionals in our field. And I think now it highlights the people who care most about winning awards. And, and it makes the most noise. Yeah, and sometimes they're the most talented, but sometimes not. And and so you know, I think I think the uh, you know they're not a, it's not a differentiator of agencies anymore. I think the the more obsessed we as advertising professionals are about awards, I think there's something that really suggests we lack confidence that we're you know craving this sort of third party um, this sort of third party uh, um, validation. Um, and, and so I, and I, I think, it, I, and I do think it keeps us from, from focusing on business. It's, I've been in plenty of places where discussions that should be about how do we help this, this brand grow becomes, oh, this will be a great piece uh, for our case history video and, or case study video and what have you. So I, I absolutely believe, you know, I'm passionate about good work. Um, I just, I, I just, and I, and I do see the value of having a curated collection of the best of, you know, you know, the best of, of us as we, you know, how, how tall we stand every year. Um, I just don't think that's where we've gone. I think now it's just every, you know, the merely competent still end up getting on short lists or winning awards or what have you. And, and that's, yeah, I don't know why more people aren't kind of questioning that. It seems like there are some folks, but yeah, I think the majority, you know, and who doesn't want to win an award, but I just think when it becomes the focus, right, and the end goal, to me, that's just really weird. And I po posted something the other day, it was like a quote from David Ogilvie that said, if it doesn't sell, it isn't creative, right? Because at the end of the day, that is our job is to make some impact. You yeah. Know? Um, and, and, yeah. And personally, I love on, on like a LinkedIn, like, I love it when people just show their work. Hey, look at this cool thing that we did. And maybe it's cool and maybe it's not, but it's at least it leaves it up to you to decide as opposed to going, oh, this, this jury really like this. I, I like, I don't care what the jury thinks. Show me the work. Right. 
Yeah, and then you typically don't even see the work, right? It's or it's a link to it, but it's like a you know picture of the award or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is perhaps the most important one. Number five: never commit to sharing five principles until you know you can think of five. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, you and I talked earlier, and you you said, yeah, well, you know, let's give people like something tangible to kind of kind of a. Uh, keep in mind, like, you know, five principles or whatever. I'm like, yeah, no problem. That sounds great. And I, like, I don't know why. I think being in advertising for so long, like you, you get really good at oversimplifying things, right? Like if you give me a list of five things, I'm like, well, this, these two are kind of alike. Right. This one's probably not that important. So it's a list of three. Like it, like, yeah, we are we're always trying to narrow this down. And so, yeah, I agreed to, to five principles and I, I can't think of the fifth. I, I, and that reminds me <laughs> of like, like I raised a child and I couldn't tell you five things about raising a child. Like it's, it's, right. it, it's pretty bad. Um, and, and, so the it reminded me of when I first uh, connected with Oatly, and I didn't have a website app or anything like that. And you know, they said, "Well, it'd be nice to see your work," which I thought was a, a fair request. And and so uh, I did this PDF, and it was five reasons why I might be right for you. Like, not sure we haven't met yet, but you know, maybe. And uh, yeah, one was inter, you know international experience. One was client agency experience. One was working on passion brands and and what have you. I, I, of course, can't think of the fourth one, but there was a fourth yeah. one. And it got to the fifth one, and it was like, I, I really, it's same, same as here, I could not think of a fifth one. So instead of just going back and, and changing the title of the document, the fifth one, like I sent him this document, and the fifth one just read, oh, shit, like, I can't believe I promised you five things, and I can only think of four. This is so, so embarrassing. And, you know, if we if we talk in a couple of weeks, maybe I can think of one. And, you know, like... And, and, you know, to them, they're like, yeah, this is a very oatly kind of way to do things. Right. I'm like, yeah, good. It's, yeah. it's also, it's also a me kind of way to do things. And so, yeah, it was just one more proof point that, uh, it was good, uh, a good connection on, uh, on the career stuff. Yeah, that's great. I love that. It just yeah. shows, you know, uh, yeah, a sense of humor and, 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 and yeah, that's great. I love that. So now that you're at this point, right, you're at this, I won't call it a crossroads because that sounds dramatic, but you're in this <laughs> point where you're, it's an exciting time for you, right? Totally. Um, are you thinking of these things? I'm going to put it back on you. you know, like you got you to gotta, you gotta be thinking about this, right? You're, 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 you're taking steps to be in charge of your career. You're, you've got your evergreen goals, uh, it sounds like, right, which is really around making impact. Um, you know, you, you have your sort of your broad definition of what you do. Where, where do you think, what's the story? Where, where are you going to, where are you going to go? Where do you, do you want to go? Let's put it out in the, in the universe. And, and I mean, what's, yeah. Uh, what are you it, thinking? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I mean, to me, I would love to find Oatly circa 2013, mm. you know, which, which if you look at, if you look at the brand, the company back then, you had really brave leadership. You had a great trust between the leadership of the company and the creative leader. Um, you had a you had a, a cool um, sort of under under loved product, um, but even most importantly, the hard work wasn't done yet. You know, I, I would love to, because I when I got to Oatly, it, it was it was interesting. We talk about making impact, and when I got to Oatly, I didn't really. The last jobs I've had for the last twenty years have all been sort of good meaty roles. It's been, you know, start something or build something or change something, you know, fix something or what have you. And at Oatly, it was don't fuck it up, you know, because they, they were doing so many good things already that by the time I got there, it was kind of like, you know, hey, here's here's your here's your uh, toy box, go play, you know, and, and so it was a blast, but it, you know, you, did, you didn't really feel like you've had as much impact there as you would at you know at, at other places so the irony is you know the pre my previous job where they would say how long are you gonna stay i'd say as long as i'm making a difference i completely forgot that lesson when i went to Oatly, or maybe undervalued how much that meant do you know what i mean so yeah so when you think about sort of what what's next i i get super excited about you know ha you know having the Having it be a big, you know, big blank slate, you know, um, some some good faith in, in in like a high bar of creativity, some good faith that that can be uh, done well, and uh, yeah, get, like let's get let's get to it. So that's I ideal. Love that. um, yeah, yeah, I think that can 
happen in a, in a couple of different ways. I'll, I'll be launching a website of my own work, which will be cut off. Like it'll be only stuff that I've done since I turned 50. Um, because, you know, knowing that ageism is, a, is obviously a pretty big factor in hiring decisions and, and advertising, what have you, it's like, yeah, well, you know what, I can't, uh, I can't fake it. So let me just like run right into it and go, this is all the stuff I've done since I turned 50. And, yeah. um, um, you know, and then, and then I will probably, yeah, I'd, I'll probably launch an, an, a, uh, an agency. Um, but it, yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to be. It's going to be fun though. Really? All right. Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah. you know, you know, you know, you know where to, you know where to find me. I, I, I don't, don't make me, don't make me threaten you. Don't make me send you a threatening <laughs> email about how you need to come up with a plan before I get there. <laughs> It's a deal. It's a deal. Um, I have a I have a couple more questions because I'm just having sure. way too much fun. Just in 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 speaking with you, you strike me as someone who takes in a lot of information. Who's someone who who is constantly learning, right? And I would imagine the attempts to improve just your overall creativity and the ideas that you come up with. Where are you finding ideas? What do you What do you do? Are you Are you a reader? Are you listen to podcasts? Or what do you take into you know into the brain? Yeah, I tend to, articles are probably my chief sort of input, um, the sort of way to fill the well. Um, and sadly, I don't have enough focus to, to make it through many books, which is uh, a shame because I hear there's some, some good ones out there. Um, but podcasts also play a role. Uh, on LinkedIn, I, I actually have a pretty good curated feed of people who are either doing great work or are, you know, sort of linking to just some terrific work. Um, so that, that, uh, that too really helps. Um, yeah, I think, I think those are, those are probably the, the primary ones, but you know, life in general, if you have your eyes open and you're, you know, it's sort of taking, taking in sort of human behavior. I think that that's about as uh, inspiring as anything. Yeah. Well, you certainly have inspired uh, me and I'm sure that you've inspired the audience. You're giving me a lot of things to think about, I need to pay attention to how long it takes me to get out of bed in the morning. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's number one, just, you know, opening myself up to just kind of like different opportunities and, and, you know, really thinking about, well, what is that? What, it, what is it that will make me jump out of bed in the morning? What's the impact that, that I want to, that I want to make. So thank you for sharing those. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate, you know, just you taking the time and I, I'm super happy that, uh, that we connected. Uh, thank you for being so generous with, with your connection and with your time. And uh, I hope we can keep the conversation uh, alive and, and just check for in sure. every every once in a while. I really dig your your whole vibe and your sense of humor. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's been a fun time. Thanks. I would love that and uh, really appreciate you having me on. And that's going to do it for another episode of Confessions of a Creative Director. Thanks to my very special guest, Kevin Lynch. I love that question. What stories will I be able to tell if I take this job? It's definitely a question that we should all keep in mind as we look for the next opportunity. Definitely uh, going to be asking myself that question. All right, folks, if you haven't picked it up yet, pick up my book, What's the Big Idea? An Indispensable Guide for Becoming a Kick-Ass Creative Director. It's almost that time. It's almost review season. And it's almost time to ask your boss for a promotion. If you are in that position where you might be moving up or thinking about moving up or thinking about thinking about moving up to creative director, you need this book. It's going to give you sort of a, a 3,000 foot view of the job, what it entails, some practical tips, and best of all, it includes uh, nuggets of wisdom from dozens of creative directors from all over the world. So pick that up. It's available on Amazon, also on Audible. And if you're already in that position, you need a little creative director therapy, a little creative director coaching, reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Uh, go to JaimeCabreraCreative.com. Uh, sign up for a 20-minute uh, complimentary consultation so we can figure out how and if I can help you. Uh, and I'd love to just meet, uh, you know, aspiring creative directors. So check that out. All right, folks, until next time, peace, love, and creativity. See ya.